Salutations! Thank you for lending an ear to The Voice of the Times for Saturday, November 6, 2021. For today's editorial, ADB explains simple solutions are often the best. The Asian Development Bank, headquartered here in the Philippines, has consistently been among the most energetic institutions in pursuing climate change response initiatives, but the deceptively simple idea it presented in a recent blog post is a gem even by ADB's lofty standards, simply by covering them up. Landfills can be turned into a source of low-cost energy while at the same time helping to curb emissions of methane, a greenhouse gas even more dangerous than carbon dioxide. Methane, or CH4, is produced by bacteria decomposing organic material. Emissions of CH4 are not as great as those of CO2 but are comparatively more dangerous. Over a 20-year time period, CH4 has about 85 times the atmospheric warming potential of the same amount of CO2. CH4 breaks down faster than CO2 does, but not fast enough. Over a 100-year time span, it is still 23 times more effective than CO2 in trapping atmospheric heat. Methane emissions have been one focus of this week's COP26 summit in Glasgow, Scotland, with more than 100 countries pledging to cut emissions by 2030. While CH4 does occur naturally, human activity has caused the concentration of it in the atmosphere to skyrocket. It is produced by oil and gas drilling and some other industrial operations, solid waste landfills, and by increasing global temperatures melting permafrost and deep sea ice deposits that trap natural methane. Solid waste landfills are responsible for about 12% of global methane emissions, according to the International Energy Agency, or about 3% of local greenhouse gas emissions, and this has caught the attention of the ADB's researchers. In an article in the ADB development blog on October 30, they proposed a simple solution, cover the landfills, extract the trapped methane, and use it as fuel for electricity and heat. The biggest advantage of such an approach apart from emissions control is economic. Depending on the size of the landfill, enough CH4 could be collected to sustain a small power plant. This could supply at least enough energy to operate the landfill's wastewater treatment facilities and other equipment. Alternatively, the gas can be filtered and used as compressed biogas or bio-CNG and used as fuel for cooking or for vehicles. The gas and surplus electricity can be sources of additional revenue at a minimum, making use of the CH4 in some way can reduce the costs of solid waste management. Even if the collected CH4 is simply burned off, which is obviously not an ideal solution, the resulting emissions are still less harmful than allowing the methane to escape to the atmosphere as burning it produces CO2 and water vapor. The simple solution presented by the ADB blog article can and should be applied in the Philippines. Solid waste management has always been problematic in this century as it is seen as a cost with no tangible profit. The approach of government agencies responsible for managing solid waste has always been to do no more than is absolutely necessary to comply with the relevant environmental laws and sometimes not even that much if they can get away with it. Having an alternative that greatly reduces or even eliminates the costs and potentially provides new revenue streams would be a powerful incentive to apply the effort necessary to improve waste management. Although the ADB offers a careful disclaimer to the blog that articles found in it represent the views of their authors and not of the bank as a whole, given that this article's authors are ADB staffers, a senior energy specialist and urban development specialist respectively, it is not difficult to see the subtext that the ADB would very likely support such a project if it were presented. Find the landfill projects, develop them, and the financing will come, the last sentence of the article reads, and that is precisely what the agencies concerned in the Philippines should do. In fact, all the government would need to do is to enable such a project it would be a good candidate for a public-private partnership or PPP arrangement, one that, somewhat unusually, would offer profits to a private enterprise without imposing any costs at all on the public. And that's the editorial for Saturday, November 6, 2021. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print, subscribe to its digital edition, or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, and listen to the Voice of the Times.